Hi, my name is Celia Thornley and I'm speaking from UKFT, the UK Fashion and Textiles Association. So UKFT's activity is actually focused on five key areas. We lobby government to make sure that at that level they know what the industry needs. We provide business support. We support international business. And most importantly with regard to this talk, UKFT is the sector skills body for the industry. So I want to bring to your attention the resurgence of the fashion and textiles industry and the wonderful opportunities, uh, careers and jobs that are out there for young people. Um, so first of all, let me tell you about how we're growing. The UK fashion and textiles manufacturing sector actually produces 9.1 billion of products ranging from designer wares to fabrics used in medical, defence and transport industries, so a whole range, but 9.1 billion pounds worth, wow. Exports have seen a 66% increase since 2008, so we're exporting a lot of stuff. Employment statistics show a continued steady growth of people working in the sector, with a current record of 109,000 working in all the different subsectors across the industry. So how is the fashion and textiles industry made up? What does it look like in the UK? Uh, well, it's such a diverse sector, you wouldn't believe it. There's so many different types of products out there. There's so many different types of fashion and textiles manufacturing companies. I could go on all day. But there's four key areas that we will focus on today. We've got textiles, we've got apparel, we've got footwear and leather, and we have home textiles. So the textiles industry includes a variety of different things. Um, from producing textiles, actually weaving and making them, to finishing textiles. There's a number of subsectors within the textiles industry. We've got automotive textiles, which is all about airbags, car seats, seat belts, etc. We've got composites, which is one of the most interesting areas of textiles. Composites are woven to produce a hard shell. And out of that hard shell, we're making aeroplanes, we're making race cars, we're making body armour. So you know if you saw a, a policeman in a, a bulletproof vest, that's usually made of textiles composites. We have medical textiles, which is an amazing subsector. We're actually making heart valves in textiles, can you imagine that? We have all kinds of other medical textiles, including you know, the, the kind of bedding that they use in a hospital, stretchers, masks that we've used throughout the pandemic, and all of the PPE that the NHS has needed. We've got geotextiles, which are used in heavy industry. You know, um, even the filters in your hoover at home, they're all textiles as well. And there's a lot of technology behind those filters, believe it or not. We've got industrial biotechnology, fabrics that are laid actually under roads to keep the, make sure the roads are environmentally friendly and maybe that those meshes and fabrics actually rot and help the environment. We line lakes, we line reservoirs, all with textiles. We also have performance textiles which are coming into their own now. Performance textiles can gauge temperature and can actually control heat. And we've even got spacesuits that automatically change composition to combat radiation. How amazing is that? Then we've got the apparel sector, which is so vibrant um, and it's growing all of the time. We've got some great British designers and great British brands like Burberry, you know, Stella McCartney, Lulu McGuinness, Templey. There's loads of them we could reel off. Many of them are members of UKFT. Then we've got tailoring. So we've got our famous Savile Row tailors produce beautiful suits down in London. There's also the bridal sector, uh, which is a lot of hand sewing and really intricate work, uh, much like the couture sector. We've got ready to wear, which is more about fast production and fast fashion, which is about, you know, getting as many out as, as we can. We've got knitwear, we've got some beautiful knitwear companies in England. Smedley's, for instance, which make beautiful knitwear. And in fact, all over the UK, you can probably find lovely branded knitwear. The couture sector, uh, well, that really belongs in design wear, like I said earlier, but it is a, um, a law unto itself couture. It's, it is really handmade garments, taking a long time to make, and they're usually very expensive, but beautiful. So the third area is footwear, leather, and leather goods. We're talking about the production of footwear. We're talking about the processing of leather to making a hide. And we're talking about leather accessories and leather apparel. For the footwear industry in the UK, again, it's still thriving. One of the um, 
great companies in the UK is Doc Martens, they're still producing here. We've got leather bags being made in Somerset, um, Mulberry. We've got bespoke footwear makers. We're talking about the likes of George Cleveley or Ken Hall. We've also got companies that are making training shoes and trainers in the UK, so New Balance up in Cumbria. Then we've got leather apparel, so going back to our leather industry, but you know, it's, as you know, leather jackets, leather coats, leather trousers, there's plenty of that made here. We've got leather furniture, so the Senator Group, there's a number of companies still producing in the upholstery, leather sofas and leather chairs. And then we've got the actual production of hides, um, and I've been to a couple of tanneries in the UK, a bit smelly, but really interesting processes they use, and they're getting more and more technology behind them, um, as well as their traditional skills. And the last area is the homeware sector. Now, this is the fastest growing subsector in the UK. Um, and that is because we all now want our designer homes and the interiors has really hit off. So we're seeing lots of um, interior companies springing up across um, the regions. So we're talking about curtains, cushions, bedding, and we've got companies like Herbert Parkinson that are producing those kind of products. They're part of the John Lewis Group and even the production of beds by the likes of Harrison Sphinx. And then we've got carpets, something that we walk on every day but don't even really consider. We make a lot of those in the UK. So we've got Cormar carpets, we've got Brockway, we've got Rylux, and they're all designed and woven here. So how can you be a part of this growing, vibrant industry? We've got over 8,000 fashion and textiles employers across the UK and they're on the lookout for young people with a passion and a commitment and drive and a willingness to learn and in return they will give you or offer you an interesting and rewarding career. So I'll talk to you about the top seven key skill shortages. So the first thing is sewing machinists and sample machinists. So they're after people who are interested in becoming multi-skilled sewing machinists and that doesn't mean just sitting at a machine making the same thing day in, day out. It's a really interesting job. You know, you learn how to do different um, technical aspects of the job and then you can progress on to become a sample machinist. Sample machinists are so valuable. They are the people that actually make that first sample before a product goes to production. They're also looking for garment technologists or product technologists. So these are people who actually help to develop the product. So a designer will design the product, they'll get their head together with a garment technologist and they will pull together how that item will actually look, how it will be developed, how it will be made. Again, another very interesting job. Product developers is the same. We've talked about all the many different subsectors within the industry, so product developers goes right across from a, a textiles product developer, somebody that's developing furniture or somebody that's de developing shoes and footwear. So the, these are job titles that go right across the industry. They're looking for textiles operatives, which sounds a bit boring, but actually it's quite a, an interesting job. When we talk about textiles operatives in our industry, we're talking about carding, spinning, weaving, learning how to use those new looms that I mentioned earlier before. So again, it can be an exciting career, which you can build on. And then they're looking for general management, like production managers um, and leadership, like supervisors, team leaders, that kind of thing. But again, if you can build your way up through the sector, so if you start off, for instance, um, as a production sewing machinist, learn those technical skills and then start going on courses so you can build your supervisory skills up or your leadership skills, your management skills. That's how a lot of our production managers and supervisors have progressed in our industry. So the fashion and textiles industry have developed 14 new apprenticeships uh, to encourage young people into the industry and they range from level two to level five and they actually meet those skills shortages that we mentioned earlier. So as you can probably tell, we at UKFT are really excited about talking to young people about what our industry can offer. But don't just take our word for it. Watch this video. You'll see employers, educators, apprentices, employees talking about their experience in the industry, their real jobs, and where they see the future of the industry, where it's going.